Hello, this is Dr. Alexander Haskell. I am going to present a very brief presentation on breast disease and breast cancer and their relationship with thyroid and low thyroid hormones uh, with the point of view of prevention and treatment. I'd like to introduce two primary studies that I feel are most important from the last uh, 40 years. One was in the Lancet, which was a, um, a, a global study of the countries and cultures that had the highest or at least the, the full range of incidence of breast and ovarian cancer. It was found that those uh, like Japan had a very low incidence and the Lancet felt at that time it was due primarily to the uh, culture's high intake of nutritional iodine. The other study, which was um, I believe in 1996 was out of Pisa, Italy. They had taken um, 102 women with diagnosed ductal cell carcinoma breast cancer and found that there was a very high incidence of thyroid disease. And this uh, began to uh, have us ask the question, is there a relationship between the causes of thyroid disease and the causes of breast cancer? So we begin by asking some questions uh, which we'll try to briefly answer uh, in this presentation. The first is, is there a connection between low iodine and breast cancer? What is the relationship between breast disease and thyroid disease? Are the causes of thyroid disease possibly the same causes of breast disease? Can breast disease be prevented by optimizing thyroid hormones? Can breast disease be treated by optimizing thyroid hormones? Here's a brief review of iodine and iodide. Uh, it is this uh, trace mineral is required by the thyroid gland, the thyroid cells, to make thyroid hormones with deficient or insufficient uh, intake of iodine. Then the person will have insufficient levels of thyroid hormones. This iodine, or actually iodide, enters into the thyroid cell through channels called the NIS, or the sodium iodide symports. Iodine also uh, increases levels of thyroid stimulating hormone. Uh, also, the thyroid has the first priority for taking up iodide into the tissues. The discovery of these NIS channels, or sodium iodide symports, was is an, an extremely important link to the reasons uh, why iodine uh, is one of the more important nutrients uh, for the uh, prevention of breast disease and breast cancer because these channels are found not only in the thyroid cells but also in other tissues such as the breast, ovaries, uh, and placenta and prostate. And I think, I believe through the research, the reason for these channels is because iodine is absolutely necessary for healthy tissues and the protection and prevention of, of illness or disease or pathology. TSH uh, is stimulated by iodine. I already mentioned that. TSH stimulates and upregulates or activates these sodium iodide symport channels. There must be a reason for this, and that is these channels store and help the cells to utilize iodine and iodide. Iodine has the property of both being antibacterial and antifungal. It is necessary for optimal thyroid hormone production. Here is another very important uh, relationship between uh, iodine and prevention of breast um, cancer and also breast disease is because when the uh, thyroid hormones are at optimal levels, they help to produce a, um, a protein called sex hormone binding globulin, which is the carrier of estrogen, um, of the hormone estrogen. When your sex hormone binding globulin is low, then there's a lot more free or available estrogen to be circulating and actually stimulating the receptors, estrogen receptors on breast tissue. So optimizing uh, thyroid hormones is essential for the pre prevention and the treatment of breast disease. 
according to prevalent theory, low iodine can be a risk factor for autoimmune thyroid disease, which we'll be explaining hopefully in a little bit. Um, iodine prevents goiters, um, and people with goiters have three times the risk of developing breast cancer. Also lower susceptibility to endocrine disrupting chemicals. This is a study out of Paris showing that there are certain chemicals which cause thyroid problems and those people with um, lower levels of iodine systemically were more predisposed to having problems from these chemicals. Um, they are essential for mental and physical development. These reduce also cysts in the breast and ovaries. Iodine and io iodide uh, down-regulate several estrogen receptor genes on breast tissue. It's very, very important and possibly the reason why the Lancet Journal article showed a lower prevalence of breast uh, cancer uh, due to this quality of, that iodine has upon these receptors. Covering estrogen a little bit, there are three forms, the E1, E2, and E3, which are estrone, estradiol, and estriol. Estrogen stimulates uh, the normal breast tissue growth, especially around the time of puberty. Uh, pr the estrogen is produced by ovaries and also fat tissue. Estrogen travels through the blood either bound, which is a sex hormone binding globulin, or free and available. And estrogen levels or the effects of estrogen are balanced by progesterone. Too little estrogen most women are familiar with who have reached their perimenopausal uh, period of their life. These include night sweats, vaginal symptoms or problems, depression, flashes, mood swings. Too much estrogen increases thyroid binding globulin, which is a protein that binds onto thyroid hormones and keeps them unavailable or not able to improve the metabolic rate. This is one cause of low thyroid hormone symptoms, high estrogen. Too much estrogen also increases thyroid cell growth. This is the, um, another cause of the thyroid goiter besides lack of iodine is too much estrogen. Too much estrogen also decreases the NIS or the sodium iodide symport uh, expressions or um, the genes that upregulate or create these symports or channels. Too much estrogen also decreases iodine uptake into thyroid and other tissues. It causes abnormal breast tissue metabolism and growth, the reason why estrogen is linked to um, cystic conditions and also breast cancer. Um, estrogen also actively stimulates the receptors on estrogen receptor positive breast cancer cells. This is the end of the first section. You'll then or now continue to go on to the, the second of three of the videos on breast cancer.